Hi, today's May 7th, 2023, and I'm on my way to um, get a bone marrow biopsy and aspiration. And I just thought I would kind of document or journal my my experience and my and my journey with um, the diagnosis that I received about two months ago um, on lymph, uh, lymphoma diagnosis. So I had gone in just for a um, a problem with my a foot. I had um, a problem with my foot, the plantar fasciitis and it wasn't healing and I made an appointment with my doctor and she decided just to run some routine blood tests and then um, saw notice that my platelets had dropped and they had been dropping for the past few years they had gone from in the 200s to 150 and then to 120 and then to 111 and she was concerned so she decided to contact um, consult with a hematologist who recommended an ultrasound and some more blood work and a CAT scan and they determined that my spleen was enlarged um, and I had low platelets and then on a flow cytometry test they found some B cells um, in my blood work so he diagnosed me with a marginal zone splenic um, splenic marginal zone lymphoma but he wasn't sure he just thought that's what it might be based on the fact that I only had a small amount of um, abnormal B cells in my flow cytometry test and a moderately enlarged um, spleen and at the time he didn't think that I had any severe symptoms B cell symptoms um, B cell lymphoma symptoms the typical symptoms are you know night sweat drenching night sweats and um, pain in my abdomen um, itching and um, fever and things like that and all the only symptoms I had was I did have GERD that I was diagnosed with five years prior and that had been getting worse. So my stomach problems were getting worse. And I did have some itching, but the itching was just on my feet at night. And that I did have, um, it seemed like hot flashes at night, but not severe night drenches. Um, and I had gone through menopause in my 40s and had pretty much finished hot flashes, but I noticed they'd come back for about a year. Um, but again, he didn't think that was probably related to the lymphoma. So anyway, he ended up um, saying that we should do a watch and wait with blood work every three months. And um, I decided to go forward with a second opinion. I'm, I'm not going to name the hospitals that I'm working with, but this this hospital that I got the second opinion from is a teaching hospital, one of the top in um, the United States. And that doctor who's a specialist in lymphoma um, told me that I should, her recommendation that I should get all the tests, a PET scan, um, more blood work, and um, a bone marrow biopsy and aspiration to figure out what type to try to diagnose the actual type of lymphoma, the subtype. So um, when my doctor found out, saw the, sec the recommendation, he decided to go forward with the testing. So I've had a PET scan and I had the extra blood work. And today I'm going in for the bone marrow biopsy and aspiration. Now the, this test that I'm having today is done um, with a local anesthesia, lidocaine, and nothing else. And I'm, to be honest, really, really nervous about it. Um, so I did contact the doctor and I asked for some kind of like sedation and they said they just don't do that. Um, but he did give me five one milligram Ativan pills. He gave me five one milligram Ativan pills. And basically on the bottle it just said, take one every six hours or as needed but um, I had I was advised to actually from another doctor um, to take 
one Ativan one hour before the procedure, and if I didn't feel anything, 30 minutes before the procedure, take one more. So I have now taken one Ativan. Um, it's one hour before my procedure. Um, it's just starting to kick in a little bit. I mean, I, I'm very jittery. I'm shaking. I'm just very much a nervous wreck. But um, so it hasn't it hasn't been enough time to really kick in. But I'm feeling maybe a little less jittery. Um, but anyway, I thought I would kind of document this journey because I know lymphoma is on the rise as far as getting diagnosed. You know, probably because of all the toxins in our environment. So um, there's going to be a lot more people being diagnosed and because it is rare, considered a rare cancer, um, you, there's just not a whole lot of information. Um, I've been looking on YouTube channels and trying to get in as much information as I can. And um, most of the information I'm finding is like five years old and a lot of it's from Canada so or from Europe and so, it, it's not, you know, I'm not finding great information. So I just thought it might be helpful if I did start this documenting my experience and it might help somebody in the future that's going through the same thing as me. Um, the one thing I did find out that I liked about my second opinion was I got educated on exactly what lymphoma is because to be honest, I don't know anyone that's had it and I didn't really understand what it is. But it is a um, cancer of the white blood cells, or another way to look at it is, is it's a cancer of our immune system. So it usually, most of the lymphomas are going to target your spleen, um, your lymph nodes, um, and place, and just the actual immune system itself. And there's aggressive lymphomas and there's what they call indolent lymphomas and indolent lymphomas are not curable but they're treatable and you can be treated and go into remission and supposedly live a very long life if you continue staying on top of your blood work and your treatments so i've been diagnosed so far with the splenic marginal zone which is an indolent type um, but I'm getting these more tests to get a, a definitive diagnosis to make sure it is what the doctor thinks it is and that it is an indolent type. So I will keep you posted on this bone marrow biopsy and aspiration. I'll let you know how it goes when I finish. Um, and I will keep you posted. Thank you. Bye. Hi, so today is June 7th and it is four o'clock and I have completed my first bone marrow biopsy and aspiration. I was really, really nervous and I had gotten permission from the doctor to get Ativan. He prescribed me five one milligram pills and I was told that I could take one an hour before the procedure, and then if I didn't feel anything, take one more 30 minutes before the procedure. And that is what I did. Um, I started off with one 30 minutes before the procedure, and um, I also took that with two 500 milligrams of Tylenol, um, because Tylenol, I read, was, um, okay to take prior to, to procedures um, to reduce pain after the procedure is over and it doesn't interfere with Ativan or anything they're doing in the procedure. So I took that and then I waited 30 minutes and I didn't feel, I felt a, the butterflies were still in my stomach and I still felt nervous. I could feel the medication but not very strong so I took Ativan number two and um, it didn't do anything right away um, but then when I went into the actual room 
Um, they had me wait there for about 30 minutes or 20 minutes because the doctor was still with another patient, a prior patient. So I sat for another 30 minutes and I could feel it slowly working. Um, and so when the doctor came in, or the, she's a nurse practitioner, she came in and explained the procedure to me. They had me lay down flat on a table with a pillow in front of my head and they told me to hug the pillow. And then she told me she was going to be injecting me with lidocaine. And as the needles went in, that might hurt. She had me hold my breath every time she poked with the needle and then slowly relieve the my breath. Um, she did this about 10 times. Then she had me wait. Um, and then we waited about five minutes. And then she went to another layer of my skin. So she went deeper um, and did a second time deeper, the same thing, putting the needle in and having me hold my breath. And then she did a third time on the top of the skin, which she said there's more nerves, so it hurts more on the top. So then she did lidocaine on that. So when she finished doing the lidocaine on all three layers, um, she started talking to me and we were talking about, um, she had finished a trip in Maui and I had snorkel and scuba dive with my husband. And so I had a lot to talk about and we were chatting about that. And while we were chatting, she was working on my back. Um, she began to insert instruments into my back. I could barely feel anything going in and out, but I could feel pressure and I could feel sensations of things being put in and pulled out. Um, she had asked me if it was okay to use a tool that is a drill. And the reason why she said it's very fast um, there is one tool that they need to push into the bone, but it takes a lot of strength. Um, so it does take longer to screw that in. But using this tool that's like a little screwdriver, um, like a drill that pushes the tool in, she can do that quicker. So she asked permission and I said to go ahead and do it. So when she drilled it in, it basically, she said, well, it's sensitive when they remove the, um, they aspirate out the uh, bone marrow and also they take a piece of the bone marrow. So she had me count down and then she aspirated out the bone marrow first and she took four vials of the bone marrow and each time she did it i felt a slight kind of a strange sensation but not a sharp pain just a kind of a, a soft sensation maybe it would be out of one to ten i would say maybe a two at the most and then she said now i need to get in and get the bone the actual bone so when she drilled into there and removed that part, I did feel it and it probably went to more like a four, but just for a few seconds. When she looked at that piece, she thought that it didn't look like a good sample. She said there was some cartilage on part of it and she wanted it to be a nice piece of the bone marrow. So she went, she asked permission to go back in and do it one more time. And I told her, go ahead and do it. So she went back in one more time. And this time she was able to get a very good sample. Um, again, the second time she did it, you know, I held my breath and kind of squeezed my toes and hands. Um, but it was done quickly. And then they, they removed everything from my back and cleaned my back and bandaged it. And they were having trouble to stop the bleeding, mainly because I have low platelets. 
So they bandaged up my back really good and they rolled me onto my back and they asked me to wait laying on my back for 10 minutes to make sure that it was going to stop, the bleeding was gonna stop. She also showed me two jars with my bone marrow floating in it. And it looks like a red piece of skin, but she said, actually it's the bone marrow and if you touch it, it's hard. Um, she then showed me four vials of the um, the bone marrow that they aspirated, which was the liquid part of it. And she showed me these little things that float in it. There's like little, bump, they look like beads kind of floating in the bone marrow. Um, so she got all of that and she felt confident she got plenty for labs to test. And And um, after 10 minutes, she came back and she said my back looked like it was stopping bleeding and that I could go. Um, they did give me a um, paper to read with instructions. And basically, the instructions basically just say post bone marrow instructions. One, keep dressing dry and in place for 24 hours. Two, light activity for one day. Three, after 24 hours, you may remove the dressing and shower. You may use a Band-Aid on this area if you wish. Four, no tub baths, pools, or hot tubs for two days. Five, avoid taking um, NASADs for 24 hours, NSADs for 24 hours but it's okay to take Tylenol. You also should not take any fish oil. And, or fish oil, um, because that can, you know, thin your blood and cause more bleeding. And number six, a small amount of blood on the dressing normal, but if the dressing becomes saturated, they gave me a number to call the emergency department. So with that said, we left the hospital. Um, she did send me when I went to leave, she did inform me that I needed some more blood work to go to the lab to get the blood work, which I wasn't aware of. I didn't know I needed any more blood work. So, but I did go down to the lab and I had one uh, more te blood test taken down there. So I'll find out what that was um, when I get the lab results. But so, so um, I'm going to rate this experience as um, from one to 10, I would say this experience for me was probably a four. And I think it would have been much higher if I did not take Ativan, the two one milligram pills, because I was very nervous. So I think when she started drilling in there, I would have been continued to get more and more nervous. Because I'm on Ativan, I feel that it's made me a little bit, kind of a little woozy and a little bit less focused on what's going on. And so I was kind of had my eyes closed the whole time and they played music and I was listening to music and I was talking. And so I was pretty distracted and I really did not feel extreme pain. Um, I stayed in a pleasant mood. I didn't cry. I didn't scream. Um, I was still cracking jokes. And it, it seemed to be a pleasant experience. So um, I w if I did it again, I would also ask for the Ativan. And I would probably also take two, two prior to the procedure because I think that helped. So anyway, so I hope it helps you. I hope what I went through helps you um, with your journey. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, you can contact me um, below. I will have set up um, a place to post some questions. Thank you. Okay. Hi, so we finally arrived home and I took off my bandage that was on my arm from the blood test that they did. 
And I also snipped off the band, the hospital band that was around my wrist. Um, now, the last thing I need to see is where they actually took the bone marrow biopsy.